Hey friends, welcome to the Audacity Channel podcast. In this episode, I want to talk to you about room conditioning, microphone placement, and microphone technique when recording. All three of these contribute to whether or not our initial audio is good, mediocre, or just bad. So let's talk about it. Creating a quiet room to record in doesn't have to cost a lot of money. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be, and if you want to go that route, I encourage you to do so, but it doesn't have to be. There are certain things that you can do that are inexpensive to help condition your room for good audio. A room with echo is a bad room for recording spoken word content, and there are inexpensive ways to dampen or decrease or eliminate that echo. For example, any flat, hard surface is going to reflect audio. If you're sitting in front of a desk facing a wall and recording, the audio that you're speaking is going to bounce off of or reflect off of the hard surface of the desk and the hard surface of the wall, not to mention the computer screen itself. If you're facing the corner of a room while you're recording, you're going to get a lot more bass reflections. A lot of those lower tones are going to reflect back into your microphone. If when recording, you're sitting in the middle of the room or near the middle of the room, you run the risk of having audio reflections coming at you from all angles, and this can contribute to room echo. If you're recording in a room that's not carpeted or doesn't have any noise absorption on the floor, that's going to contribute to room echo. So doing simple things like placing soft cloth in places where audio reflections might happen can go a long way to dampen the echo in a room. In other words, something as simple as placing a soft towel on a desktop can help eliminate some of that echo. If you have a flat screen TV in the room, maybe draping a blanket or a quilt over it will help dampen that part of the echo. If you're recording in a room that's got a tiled floor, doing something as simple as putting down throw rugs or an area rug can really help eliminate a lot of echo. Untreated windows are another source of echo. If you have untreated windows in the, in the room that you're recording in, you can simply hang curtains over that window. And when those curtains are closed, it will help dampen the sound. It will help eliminate some of the echo or some of the reflection that's coming from the window when you speak. If you're in the middle of the room, moving out of the middle of the room can help as well. You don't have to be facing a wall. You can turn your back to the wall and still be out of the center of the room and speak into the room. And that can go a long way to creating good audio and eliminating any room echo. So something as simple as placing blankets or soft pieces of cloth or quilts or comforters around the room in spots where there are hard, flat surfaces can really help with the room conditioning. And again, those aren't expensive items. Even moving blankets can help. By placing these things all around the room in different locations, you'll notice a big difference in the audio that you're recording. And getting a good recording in that initial audio is imperative. It's hard to fix bad audio. Once you have echo or distortion in a piece of audio, it's almost impossible to get rid of. And so having a starting point of good, clear audio can save a lot of headache in the long run. So look for hard, flat surfaces that might be contributing to the reflections, to the audio reflections that you're getting in your room, and cover those up as best you can. And as I mentioned, being mindful of where the microphone is in the room can also help to eliminate a lot of the room echo that we experience. This is a good time for me to be speaking on this subject because I'm in a temporary location. We're having a house built, but it's not done yet. And when we move into the house, I'm going to have a recording room. But I'm not there yet. I'm in a temporary room, and I can't do too much with it. But what I have done with it has eliminated a lot of the echo in the room. I have soft treatments around the room, I have carpet on the floor, and I have some homemade acoustic panels that I've placed on the walls. And those help eliminate audio reflections off of the wall because of the uneven surfaces, and I've covered those acoustic panels in sound absorbing material. And it wasn't expensive. I went to Home Depot. And I bought some two foot by four foot styrofoam insulation panels. I think these are the kind that normally go inside garage doors. But I bought a bunch of those and they were very inexpensive. And then I brought them home 
and I put some material on them that my wife had found, which is a soft, sound-absorbing material. I wrapped those styrofoam panels in that material, and I used packing tape on the back side as I stretched the material across it in order to keep it in place. And then I didn't want to put it on the wall in such a way that it would be destructive to the wall, so I bought those command strips, you know, those little Velcro command strips for hanging pictures. These panels are so light that I don't need a lot of those. And those command strips are probably more expensive than the panels were. But I applied those command strips to the back of each one of my panels, and I have basically Velcroed it onto the wall. And because I use those command strips, I can remove these panels, and when we move out of here, no one will ever know they were there. They're non-destructive to the walls. They don't even leave a mark. But I've got them positioned all around this room, and it's amazing how much that helps dampen the sound of any room. Now, you could spend a lot of money getting acoustic panels, but in my experience, you don't have to. These work great, and I've spaced them out enough to where there's an uneven surface on the wall, which is really important. I want uneven surfaces, and every 8 to 10 inches, I've got one of these acoustic panels, and so the wall is uneven, and these panels supply sound-absorbing material on the wall, so I get less echo. I get less vocal reflection. And I'm not facing the wall while I talk. The closest wall is right behind me. I'm looking out into the room. And every hard surface in this room has been covered by a towel or a blanket. So I've done everything possible in this room that I don't own and that I can't modify to get the best audio that I can in my initial recordings. Because let's face it, post-production can take a long time. Content editing takes a long time. So the less that I have to do of it, the better. And that will work the same for you simply by getting some inexpensive room treatments in the room that you're recording. So let's talk further about mic placement, microphone placement. I'm not talking about microphone technique. We'll get to that in just a minute. But microphone placement in the room, again, is extremely important. In my experience, I found that it's best to be speaking out into the room. So the wall that's behind me is about two and a half feet away. There's a dresser between me and the wall, but I've got some cloth draped over the dresser to absorb the sound that that wooden dresser is going to reflect. And it does a good job. It's not perfect, but it does a good job. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be dampened. Sometimes we aim too high in our room treatments. But room treatments, again, don't have to be expensive. You've probably got material in your cupboards around your house that you could pull out and place around your room in strategic locations and have it really help. Another idea for a good microphone placement is a walk-in closet. If you have a walk-in closet or a closet that's big enough to go stand in or sit in, that can be the best vocal booth available to you, especially if you've got clothes hanging in that closet. Those clothes dampen sound. Those clothes dampen echo. And you'll be amazed at how much better your audio sounds if you're in a closet that's got a lot of clothing. Go try it. Try it right now. Well, not right now, but try it when this episode's over and see if that works for you. There are factors in our recording environment that are beyond our control. For example, right now there's a jet plane flying overhead. You probably can't hear it, but I can. And in this apartment complex that we're in, while our house is being built, the gardeners tend to show up at random times. Sometimes I'm in the middle of making a video or recording a podcast and these people show up, so I have to stop. While my room eliminates a lot of echo, it's not soundproof, so I have to be patient with that and realizing that I need to flex with it a little bit. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, when I do record, I want good audio. Now let's talk about microphone type. If you're in a really noisy environment or an environment where there's some noise and you just really can't control what's going on outside, you probably don't want to record with a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone is going to pick up every nuance in the room and beyond. I have several condenser microphones and I've packed them away. I've packed them away because in this interim time when we're waiting for our house to be completed, I recognize that in this environment that we're in, I need a dynamic microphone. Why? because it rejects more noise. I have two microphones that I left unpacked, and both are dynamic microphones. One is a shotgun microphone. It's a Cinco D2 microphone, which is a hypercardioid. 
That means it's real good at rejecting noise from the sides and the rear, and it has served me well in this environment. I'm speaking to you right now through a Shure SM7B. The Shure SM7B is a dynamic cardioid microphone as well that rejects sound from the back and the sides. I don't want to sit in this room with a condenser microphone because that just won't work. Well, I guess it'll work, but, you know, it's going to pick up a little bit more of the uh, ambiance of the room, which isn't very good ambiance at times. So microphone selection is good. Whether it's USB or XLR is up to you. The advantage of a USB mic is that you can plug it directly into your computer and not have to have an audio interface. Both USB mics and XLR mics are available as dynamic and condenser microphones. I'm not going to talk about ribbon microphones in this environment. Maybe that's a topic for another day. So that's something to think about if you're in a, a noisy environment or a echoey environment in addition to room tone, in addition to microphone placement, is the type of microphone. And a dynamic microphone is probably going to work best for you in some kind of a noisy or echoey environment to help eliminate some of that noise and some of that echo. And lastly, I want to talk to you about microphone technique. Microphone technique is extremely important. I mentioned a minute ago that I'm speaking right now into my Shure SM7B microphone, but the Shure SM7B microphone isn't right in front of me. It's off to the side. I'm not speaking into this microphone. I'm speaking across it. Why? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, I don't want plosives in this microphone. Plosives are the P's. I'm going to turn around here and face the microphone, and I'm going to give you some plosives. These are plosives. P -p -p -p. The P sound, the heavy P sound. The wind as it leaves your mouth when you're saying a P or even a heavy consonant like a C can really contribute to plosives. By the way, I backed up from my microphone again. So this microphone is off to the right side at about 45 degrees, and the distance is about seven or eight inches. Well, maybe six inches. Let's say anywhere from six to eight inches, because when I'm talking, I move around a little bit. I get kind of animated. But when using a dynamic microphone like I'm using right now, in an environment that has some echo, the closer I can get to the microphone, the less the room echo is going to be apparent. In other words, if I'm in a real echoey room, I can turn the gain of the microphone down and I can get closer to it. I can come in nice and close, just like this, and I can talk. Right now, I'm, I'm actually touching the microphone, and I may be at the most a half an inch away from the microphone. And one of the advantages of this is that all of the room ambiance or the little intricacies of the room itself, like echo and random bass tones, get reduced. This sounds pretty good. In fact, I may start doing this. Just kidding. Okay, so I'm back to where I was, and I'm talking across the microphone. One of the things to keep in mind if you're going to get that microphone really close to your mouth is the proximity effect of the microphone. I have an AT2040 microphone, which is a dynamic microphone as well. It's an XLR microphone, just like this one, but it has a pretty sensitive proximity effect to it. If I get really close to that microphone, the changes in volume and tone are enormous. But once you figure out the proximity effect of your microphone, you can reduce the gain on your audio interface or your recording device to still get really good audio. In fact, in a noisy environment or an echoey environment or an environment with a lot of audio reflections, to get close to the mic like that and turn the gain down can provide really good returns in terms of good audio. So room considerations, microphone placement, and microphone technique are the three big factors in creating good audio. Because once audio is recorded, if it's recorded in an environment with a lot of echo, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's impossible to get rid of the echo. You might be able to reduce some of it in post-production, but it can take a lot of time. It's a lot easier to just get a good initial recording. And that should be our goal in the spoken word content that we're creating, whether it's spoken word for video, spoken word for podcasts, or spoken word for audiobooks. We want good audio. We want clear audio. We want audio that's echo-free, or as close to echo-free as it can possibly be, because then post-production and content editing becomes much more enjoyable. It's easy to get burned out in post-production, 
It's easy to get burned out in content editing when you're constantly dealing with bad audio. So those are a few of my tips as far as room conditioning, as far as microphone placement, and as far as microphone technique. So I will let you go with one reminder. You can find me online at learnaudacity.com. I'm also on YouTube. My handle there is at Learn Audacity, and you'll find me at the Audacity Bootcamp online school at audacitybootcamp.com. So until next time, you all take care.